Healing Manor is so underrated. You see all this beauty and you want to capture it. You want to preserve it somewhere in your heart. You're taking a picture or a video so you can take a look later. But like no video and no photo is going to transmit and like get across how beautiful this place is. If this is not paradise, I don't know what it is. How beautiful this place. Oh just like you, before coming to Gili, I was wondering which one to pick and what to expect. I stayed most of my time in Gili Air, but I wish I picked Gili Manor instead. I really think that this place is underrated and doesn't receive the attention and the tourist influx it deserves. Just look at this! How can you salvage this and trade it to a party in Gili Tea or civilization in Gili Air? In this video, we'll talk about Gili Manor. In another video, I will tell you all about Gilly Air with some remarks about Gilly Tea so you can choose for yourself which one you want to visit. I will leave the link in the video description below. There is so much freedom in just allowing yourself to stay a night at a place that you like even if it completely against your initial plans. Without a shampoo, your creams and even spare clothes. I just made a sudden change in my plans because I fell in love with this place. It doesn't happen too often that I feel so connected to a place, so I thought, you know what, let me treat myself as someone I care about. I was supposed to do just a day trip and come back to Gili Air at 5 yesterday, and now it's 8.30 in the morning and I'm still in Gili Manor. A boat ride from Gili Air will only take you 10 minutes or so, and then you are here in this paradise. Gili Manor is a dream place. It's known as a honeymoon destination, so be prepared to see a lot of couples here. It's also famous for snorkeling, and indeed, it has a lot to offer. I saw the best turtle of my life. I saw seven big turtles! I'm so happy! Initially, I thought it was some sort of a marketing ploy, like snorkel with us and you will get to see turtles, but I actually saw turtles! For some of them, I had to, to swim a little bit out, and some of them were just casually hiding at the shore. Like, I don't know, maybe one, two meters into the water. They were just sitting there and casually eating their seaweed. One of them was so brave, it just literally let me swim next to it. It was eating and I was literally on top of it. It was so cool. I wanted to pet it so bad, but like I didn't want to scare it. Today is my second day on the island and I snorkeled today as well. I saw quite some turtles. On the first day I saw more turtles, but still I saw, I don't know, around five or six turtles today. First day I saw more than ten. And one of them was huge. It was a gigantic turtle, bigger than what I saw on the first day. It had such a massive neck and you can see on her shell that it's like very old and uh, worn out shell. It was so fearless. I could just swim next to, the, next to the turtle and sort of hug her and she was not afraid at all. I wish I could bring you home back to the Netherlands. <laughs> I went snorkeling on my own. I just paid 50,000 rupees and spent the whole day snorkeling. So I wouldn't recommend doing it in a group. It's expensive and you would have to respect the schedule. This means that if you want to stay a little longer or if you're tired and if you're just done with snorkeling for today, you can't. It also means that you cannot really swim further and explore freely because you risk being left behind. I swam next to some big groups and they scared off all the turtles and all the fish. But when I swam just a few meters further, I could spot the nonchalant turtles and the most mind-blowing fish. The best part was snorkeling I found around the... Oh, there is a, a horse. The best part was snorkeling I found around the statue. It's just fascinating there. I saw so many turtles, different types of fish. Some of the fish were so bright and colorful, of an interesting shape. It's just nothing like I've ever seen before. So pretty. Another cool area for snorkeling is around the turtle point. So if you open Google Maps and search turtle point, you'll find it. There is also some fish, a bit less fish than um, in the next to the statue, but still quite some 
you know, quite some fish, interesting to see. Uh, and uh, I found there also lots of turtles. While I was snorkeling today, I thought it must be so nice to be a fish. Like, your life is so worry-free. You just swim, sometimes you get the current, and you swim with the current, you swim just along the flow, and still all the time. So nice! This island has an amazing vibe. You immediately sense a strong character of this place. It attracts a certain type of people. People who just want to chill, relax, they want some tranquility, some peacefulness, some calmness, and they repel another type of people, those who want to party, to, I don't know, to listen to loud music and just go crazy all night long. I've seen here more people with the book than in Gili Air. And if you ask locals in Gili Air, like, do you like to party? They would be like, yes, of course, we are in for a good party. But if you ask locals here, like, are you into partying? They're like, no, that's why I live in Mena, because I don't like partying. People themselves are very friendly and nice. I felt absolutely safe leaving all my stuff with them while I was snorkeling. Like, I would not leave my stuff with just random people, but I would ask a cafe or a restaurant if I can leave my stuff behind the bar. Whether it's Gilly Air or Gilly Manor, people here are so lazy. They are like they have nowhere they need to be there is no rush so when they take an order at a restaurant or like a cafe type of place they just they, it almost feels like they are doing you a favor they're like okay let me do that but like no rush just chill relax like wait so and i don't blame them like just life here is just so paced why to rush if you can just do everything slowly i don't know how true it is but i was told by locals that um they don't remember they cannot recall any cases of robbery here but they can recall three at least three big ones in Gilly But to be fair, it can also be triggered by the statistics. The more people come to Gilly the higher probability is that something like this can happen. Some parts of the island are abandoned or not developed, like this one. It was a really weird experience between a Via resort and I think it's called Samsa Cafe. So it was very dirty and there was like no beach. I suspect there was some resort here before COVID because it looks like a swimming pool, well, abandoned swimming pool. But now there is, it's quite dormant. You will still find some cafes and restaurants here, but the choice is quite limited. So if you want to match a tea, no way! <laughs> there is no bakery on the island, so bread choice here is also very limited. You have to order or bring strawberries from Lombok, and this goes for a lot of products, which also influences the prices. People don't grow anything here. I think one of the reasons is because water here is expensive, so you have to pay for running water. Yeah, like people are reluctant them to grow stuff in there. Well, everyone grows coconuts because coconuts are just for free, just everywhere. Gili Manor has a lake. This is what the lake looks like. Gili Manor offers the most beautiful and secluded beaches. You can just walk around the island and find spots with no people. You look to your left, you look to your right, and there is no one. I just don't get it. How the watercolor can be that insane. I like the eternal sanctuary. There is a man growing them there because they are very vulnerable to predators when they're little. He has a few different pools and when a turtle, I think, nine or 12 months old, like when it gets strong enough, then he releases them to the ocean. I got so lucky because I came on the day where the turtles got hatched. So I saw a one day old turtles. They looked so cute, so soft, so tiny, and a little bit helpless and silly. I was surprised to see that you can even surf here in this part of the island. Locals are surfing here. This information is especially relevant for female travelers. There is no street lights on this island which means that if you're staying in one hotel it's going to be hard to move around in the evening 
I would say just stay at the hotel area. You can explore the beach sites and maybe they have tables at the beach so you can see the sunset. I would say don't go and explore the bars nearby. I was staying in a place um, that was quite remote <laughs> but every place is quite remote there. So there were two streets leading up to one bar and to another bar to the left and to the right but in these streets there were no lights so the only way I could go is by using the torch on my phone but I still didn't feel safe so I just stayed at the hotel maybe you are super brave and for you it's like Tanya what you're talking about but I feel that as a solo female traveler you should be careful and you should be extra careful because there is nasty-minded people everywhere, even if the majority is awesome. On the same note of safety, let me share with you a story. I was wondering whether or not I should do it and I decided to go for it because if I were you, I would like to know. I decided to stay in Gilly Manor quite last minute. I was having lunch at some place and the waiter was like, oh, we have some bungalows available. If you're interested, you can stay a night here. I know, it already sounds sketchy and scammy, but I promise you it was not. I checked that place on booking.com and it's been there for a few years and it had fine reviews. This hotel has a restaurant on the beach and in the evening I went there to read a book and I was joined by a man who was actually that waiter who offered me a bungalow in the first place. He was telling me crazy stories about how he was taking drugs with his boss, who is the owner of this place, and some weird stuff about his girlfriend. I did not like the flow of the conversation, I didn't like where it was going and soon went to bed. He cracked a weird joke. Don't leave tomorrow without saying goodbye, otherwise I'm gonna sleep by your door. Quite a nasty thing to say to a woman. I locked my door and went to bed. They have glass doors there covered with see-through curtains, so I could see that someone came to the door and stood there for maybe like 20 seconds. It was like 11, 11 30 in the evening. So finally they knocked on my door and I asked what? They didn't say anything. I asked again what they wanted and they said it's me, Mini, the name of the guy, but I already sort of knew that it was him. I said and what do you want? He did not say anything and knocked again. I asked again what do you want? Then he said um uh, I'm closing the kitchen. Do you want anything from the kitchen? Obviously, I didn't want anything. We already said goodnight and we said we'll see each other in the morning. I was half asleep. I didn't want anything from the kitchen. Even if we assume that he indeed wanted to check out of politeness, he could have knocked once and asked me immediately, excuse me, Tanya, do you want anything from the kitchen? I'm about to close it but it's not what happened. There was a couple staying in a bungalow in front of mine, but he did not check in with them if they wanted anything from the kitchen, which makes me think that he did not have good intentions. In the end, I said, I don't want anything from the kitchen, please go away, and he left. But I did not sleep well the whole night because the way they build bungalows there is they have open bathroom. There is also this open bathroom they like open bathrooms. It's always a little bit scary for me because I feel like someone can jump, jump over, but... Yeah. And this is me looking like an, an absolute mess. You can just jump over the wall and here you are, you're already in my room. And in this case, I couldn't lock the bathroom, there was no lock. And this guy, Mini, has actually built the place, so he knows all the ins and outs. And if you've ever been to Indonesia or to a similar country, you know that nights there are not quiet. There are a lot of insects, there's a lot of noises, and if you are scared, you're gonna interpret every single noise as a threat, as a danger. It's like, oh, is someone crawling? Is it like someone or just a gecko? I moved the shelf all the way to the do door frame of the bathroom and I put a fridge on top. It was very heavy. Thank God I exercise. It wouldn't save me, but it would at least create some noise if someone was trying to break in. Luckily, nothing happened. 
It makes me angry that as solo female travelers we always have to stay alert and question our actions. Was I too friendly right now? Was I too polite and kind? We always have to restrict and limit ourselves to a degree, because if I were a man and assume I like the conversation, I could have just stayed longer and talked to this guy and not been worried if I was giving off the wrong signal. I am definitely not blaming myself for the actions of this man, Minnie, but I did have thoughts like, was I too kind? Did he interpret my kindness as an invitation? People there, mostly men, because men work and women stay home, always ask you, hello, where are you going? How are you doing? And exactly because of men like Minnie, it feels unsafe to just stop and chat with them. Because you never know how they're going to perceive it. And I often tend to come across as impolite, unfriendly, rude, and even unavailable because exactly of men like Mini that's I just don't want to give off the wrong signal. I wish men would be more cognizant of the power they have which they still do have regardless of how much we talk about equality. I wish they knew how their actions affect women and they would be more aware of the things that you simply cannot do as a man. I'll be honest with you if a woman knocked on my door like this not Mini I would have still thought that it's weird and kind of odd and inappropriate, but I would not have gotten that terrified. I want to believe that most men don't have ill intentions and most of them are just unaware and completely oblivious, but hey, I still need to protect myself and I'd rather be paranoid and called crazy than sorry.